All right, so glad to be able to be with you tonight. Tonight's Wednesday night, so we'll be having church in a moment, but we want to sing a hymn before that, page 285 in the church hymn of the Lily of the Valley. Thank God he is the Lily of the Valley. <laughs> sing it with us. special prayer first so you give us just a moment to get to the table again it's so good to be able to be with you this evening thank God for you and know that you are loved and God loves you and we love you and we're so thankful uh, to be able to be with you I want to go Lord and pray let's remember all our people that's been suffering, those who have been going through situations. Let's keep the Sturgeon family listed up, that God will just be with them in a very special way, that He'll bless them and give them a comfort and a peace that only He can do. And, of course, many people of our churches is suffering with the loss of Sister Carolyn, too. And so let's just pray that God will just unite our hearts together in His love and in His grace and His mercy and give us that peace that we know we're going to see her again before very long. And I believe Jesus is soon to come. Let's remember all our people that's not been able to be with us. Liz Scarlett, let's remember Larry and Louise. Uh, so many of our people that's not been able to come. Bobby and Karen, I'll forget many of them. Let's keep Brother Ronnie Gallion lifted up. Uh, that God will just touch him. Brother Gary Dixon, just believe in God that he's going to touch him, continue to bring healing and strength to him. And all of our people that's not been able to come, let's keep them lifted up and the Lord of God will touch them and bless them. Whatever your need is today, God knows and He's able. I want you to help pray for my, I reckon you'd call it my good bad knee. <laughs> I heard it just while I go at work just a little bit. But it's going to be alright. I'm going to get off of it here in a few minutes and raise it up and the Lord's going to touch it and help it. But help us pray tonight that He'll do that. Whatever need, whatever burden, whatever care that you have, my God is able. Let's remember our lost loved ones, that God will stir their heart. They got to open their eyes. I, I see around in this world today, and I thought surely the things that was coming upon the face of the earth and the things that's happened to me and several ministers and 
uh, church people that go to church that that is our customers have been talking uh, in the last few weeks and and I thought surely that this things that have came would would turn people's hearts back to God like never before but I'm not seeing that take place and it really concerns me that people's eyes are not being opened in this last day that they can see the things that are coming upon the face of the earth it is so plain so plain the plan that has been set forth that God's word foretold would happen in these last days and yet people are not opening their eyes and they're not turning to God and so let's let's just ask God to touch our lost loved ones and help us to say to do to be something to be a light to be to be a light to bring glory to God and we're going to talk about that here in just a moment to be a light to the Lord that God might use us that we can touch hearts and we can touch lives in this last day pray for every need every special concern every situation whatever you are facing many people have been putting on after we have service and after we sing some prior concerns that they have so we want to remember all those prior concerns and every request can we do that just now father i thank you for your love and for your goodness i thank you for your grace and for your mercy lord you know every need every burden every care that's been lifted up I pray, God, for our people that's not been able to come out. I ask, God, that you just strengthen them, Lord, that your hand would be upon them. God, that your grace would touch them and strengthen them, Lord. Lord, that your hand would be there for them. Those we mention, others that's coming to our mind even now. Amy Green, Father, lift her up, Lord. Little Rivers, God, touch him, Lord. Bring, bring healing and strength to him, Lord, and help that infection to be gone. Lord, all of our people, God, that are in need and facing situations and circumstances, I pray, God, that you just touch them. Lord, that you'll minister in their lives. God, that you'll work. And Father, Lord, that you'll bring healing and strength to them. Lord, our lost loved ones, we lift them up before you, asking, Lord, that you'll, that you'll touch them. God, that you'll open their eyes, open their understanding, and help them to see their need of a Savior, Lord, that they might turn to you. Use us as a church. Use us as your people that we might say, do or be something, God that in some way would touch their lives, that their eyes might be open and their understanding might be open and they can see and hear and realize the things that are coming upon the face of the earth. And Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for all that you're doing, all that you're going to accomplish. Touch our church, touch the churches across the land, all our sister churches, all the people, Lord, who, who will listen. I pray, God, that you'll just touch and bless them in a very special way. And we give you praise and honor and glory for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. First Peter chapter 4. Now, we Sunday, we preached about, we preached from 12, verse 12 through verse 13. In First Peter chapter 4. We preached about when faith turns to fear. And then last Wednesday night, we started this chapter, chapter 1. And we went down through verse 12, and we talked about Christ being exalted. Tonight we want to talk about that same Spirit. That, that same Spirit that dwelled in Christ dwells in us. And if we will allow the Spirit to work in our lives and to manifest Himself in our lives, it will glorify and bring glory and praise unto God. Let's start here in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14. He says this, If you be approached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the Spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. You see, we, we are going to face reproach in this day and age that we live. We're going to face troubles, we're going to face circumstances, we're going to face situations. Just because you tell people you're a Christian, don't expect them to automatically love you. Most of the time, anymore, in this day and hour that we live in, Christians have become despised people. But if you are reproached for the name of Christ, then be happy. Know that the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. This refers to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit daily will lead you. We're going to talk about this in a moment more. That spirit that dwells in you will lead you and guide you and direct you. And when you're in situations and you're being reproached and you're being buffeted, he will direct you what to say, how to say, when to say, so that God might be glorified. 
We in everything we do, every action that we take, is to glorify God. So we need to be led of His Spirit. That Spirit rests on you, and that Spirit will lead you, and that Spirit will give you victory. Praise God. That same Spirit will bring to pass God's glory in your life. Now, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other man's matters. Well, now, Brother Doug, I, I'm a Christian. I, I, I don't expect these things to happen in my life unless your faith, hear me, is entirely in the cross, cross of Calvary, and you are have total faith in Christ Jesus, these things could occur in your life. Our faith must be entirely in His cross. Not my ability, not that I can make it on my own. It is by faith that He works in our life. It is not our works of righteousness. It is our faith in Him. And I want you to notice some of the things He said, a murderer or a thief. But then He goes on down, or an evildoer, someone who would do evil, someone who seeks to do evil. But now look what He throws in there in the same category or as a busybody in other man's matters. Many places in the Bible, different places in the Bible, it tells us to study to be quiet. In other words, it lets us know that we are supposed to keep our nose where it belongs. There will never be any good or any glory given unto God when you stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Don't stick your nose or be a busybody, as Scripture tells us here in verse 15, and other man's matters. Oh, that's so easy to fall into that trap. You know, we, we see other people and we want to judge them. We want to talk about them. We want to say what they're doing. But keep our nose where it belongs. If we do these things and we allow the Spirit of God to lead us and guide us and direct us, we will bring glory to God. Now verse 16, he goes on. And he says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Now I want you to realize he is talking about suffering for the cause of, of Christ. Now many times people suffer, and a lot of the things that happens in their life, they bring it upon their selves. Uh-oh. By being a busybody that we just talked about. By getting in other people's matters where they have no business being, and then they say, oh, I'm suffering for Christ. No, you're suffering because you had your nose where it didn't need to be. You're not suffering for Christ. You're not, you're not having reproach because of the cross. And don't expect that God will receive any glory of it. But if you suffer for the cause of Christ, people look down upon you because you're a Christian or you don't run to the same accesses as they do and, and, and they, you know, they just don't treat you like they do others, realize and count yourself uh, to be happy, and we're going to talk about that up here in verse 13 in just a moment, you have nothing to be ashamed of when you walk and you talk the way God would have you to do. He tells us here in verse 16, let him glorify God on this behalf. We are to lift up Christ. Christ is to be glorified in our lives. Think about it for just a moment. Stop. Sometimes it pays us to stop and think and ask ourselves this question. Would Christ have been glorified in my life today? Oh my. That hits home, doesn't it? It's not always an easy thing to think. But would Christ have been lifted up in my actions, in my attitudes, the things I said, and the things I've done, would Christ have been glorified in my life? He desires to be glorified on our behalf, verse 13, he says, he talks about in verse 12, he talked about the fiery trials that we fall into. And in verse 13, he said, but rejoice. So we are to rejoice when these things come our way. It's not always easy. It's not always easy when trouble, situations, circumstances come, but we need to rejoice that we are counted worthy to suffer for Christ's sake, that he might be glorified and that he might be lifted up. We are to rejoice in these things. What helps us to rejoice? That same spirit. 
that spirit, that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the book of Romans tells us that that same spirit, the same spirit, oh hallelujah, when Christ arose, that same spirit now dwells in your life and leads you and guides you and brings life to you. So God help us to listen and hear and heed the leading of the Spirit of God. And we'll find ourselves rejoicing because we are glorifying God. Let him, he says in the end of this verse 16, let him glorify God. Now verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them who obey not the gospel of God? Now God will judge his own. One day we will stand before God and we will receive those rewards and we will be judged. Those works, wood, hay, and stubble will be burnt and any works that we've done to bring him glory and honor, there'll be crowns given. We're going to stand before him one day and give an account. We need to stop and think about that. It's not a pleasant thought to think about that. We're going to stand before him. Every idle word, those things that we've said, those things we've done, we're going to be judged. But thanks be to God, those things that are wrong, those things that are bad are under the blood of Jesus Christ because we have placed our faith in Christ in the cross. It is not a works of righteousness. And when we stand before him because of our faith in Christ, we will hear well done. We will be judged. So if he's, going to re if he's going to judge the redeemed and he's going to judge his own, then how much more shall he judge the unredeemed? The cross alone stays and keeps me and you who believe in Christ from the judgment of God. The cross, that's the only thing that keeps us from the judgment of God. And, and so we have that faith in Christ and we know because of that, we are his, and he is ours. And if he judges us, how much more shall those who have spurred the cross? And he tells us this in this next verse. Listen, verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, and that can only happen by trusting in Christ Jesus, only by trusting in Christ and believing in him and looking unto him, so he says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Think about those who have rejected Christ Jesus, who have spurned his love and his mercy, who have turned him aside, who have refused the cross. There is no hope for their salvation. What do you mean, brother? There's only one way, and that is by Christ and his cross. It's only by the way that he made. And those who reject those things, those who pushes those things aside and refuse those things, there is no hope of their salvation. No hope. Verse 19. Wherefore, let them who suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. I want you to catch this. We sang a, a beautiful hymn that I love, page 120, Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Thanks be to God that I have victory in Him. I can commit the keeping of my soul to Him and well-doing. Through many dangers, the song Amazing Grace, page 57. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I, and verse 3 is where we live now. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that's brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. So I have committed my soul unto him. Do I stumble? Sure. Do I falter? Sure. Do I fail? Sure. But he never leaves me. He never forsakes me. My faith is in him and his cross, and he brings victory in my life. You see, he is a faithful creator. He is a faithful creator. He who created us, he 
who made a way for salvation has not made a way for an insufficient salvation, but his salvation is sufficient. The blood has never and will never lose its power. He is able to forgive unto the uttermost those who trust in him and who believes in him. Because our faith is in Jesus Christ and nothing else. Because we believe in him and we trust in him and we look to him, he has guaranteed our victory if we follow Christ Jesus and his way. He will make ways where there seemeth to be no ways. His hand will be there for us. He that have begun a good work in you will perform it, will complete it, will make it come to pass unto that day. Our Lord and our Savior. Then we'll be able to sing the last verse of page 57. When we've been there 10,000 years bright shining as the sun, we no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Thank God that same Spirit still dwells in our hearts and in our lives. What I want to tell us today and how I want to end today is we have victory as long as we keep our eyes upon Jesus. As long as we allow Him to lead us and guide us and direct us and when we step out of the wrong way, listen to His Spirit. Let His Spirit get us right back in the step that we should. Find forgiveness for those things where we stumble and falter and keep our eyes upon Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. For he is the only way. Looking unto Jesus. The book of Hebrews tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author. He authored my salvation. He started me on this walk. But not only is he the author, he is the finisher. He will complete it. He will bring it to pass. Thank God I have victory in him. Brother Doug, you know the things that are coming upon the face of the earth? What about all these things? God knew about all these things. He's got them all under control. I don't understand them all. I don't know how to get out of them all. I, I can't tell you what to do, but to trust in Jesus. And his hand will be there for you. And he will never leave you. And he will never forsake you. He will be there for you. He guarantees that we have victory in Christ Jesus by faith in Him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, no greater time than to allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart and to speak to your life and 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 come and receive Him. How do I receive Him? Well, the way you receive Him is by faith. That you believe that Christ is. That you believe that He died for your sins upon the cross that you receive that forgiveness and ask Him for that forgiveness of your sins, that He cleanse you and wash you and make you whole because He paid that penalty and you began trusting in Him and looking unto Jesus. He'll save you, He'll cleanse you, He'll wash you and make you whole. If you are a child of God today, let me tell you, lift up your head. Oh, you might be down, you might be discouraged, we all get there. Lord knows I've been there a lot today frustrated and aggravated and most of the time at myself more than anybody else and, and discouraged but let me tell you if we'll take just a moment and come aside God will bring victory in our lives he will show us that these things down here are temporal and they're so quickly passing away glory be to God and that he's coming again after his church lift up your head look unto Jesus and you will have victory in him don't forget, church, be praying one for another, lifting one another up. Let's pray for all of our shut-ins, those not able to come. If you hadn't called some of them, be sure to call. If you hadn't sent a card, be sure to send a card. You just don't know what a blessing it is uh, to receive a card that somebody's thinking about you, that somebody's praying for you when you're not able to go. It, it is such a blessing. So allow, allow the Spirit of God to lead you to do that. Call them. Tell them you love them text them or whatever form you do let them know that you love them and you've been missing them and that you care for them don't forget sunday lord willing at 11 o'clock we'll be coming together at the sparta church of god for church looking forward to the blessings of god so thankful that god's spirit and his presence has been there so real and so wonderful i appreciate all our people that have been coming i appreciate all the support uh, those that can't come we appreciate you we understand i know you're praying uh 
many are sending their, their support. We, we appreciate all these things that you do. The church is going forth. The church is not going down. Well, I know the days we live in, but the church is going forth. The church is not going down. The church is going up. So you keep looking to Jesus. Keep praying one for another. And we're just looking for a wonderful service, a wonderful time together in the Lord. Come be with us. Uh, and, and we just thank God for His goodness and His mercy. God bless your heart. Wish we could spend more time with you today. Amen.